Whenever you look at these labels on these vitamin C serums, they always have words like antioxidant, anti-aging, brightening, which doesn't give you any real information. This is like equivalent of looking at a Tinder profile of a white guy who says he likes fishing, he likes hunting, he likes to grill. What am I gonna do with that information? What am I gonna do? By the end of this video, I shit you not, you're gonna have a PhD in vitamin C serums. I promise you that. Raise your hands if you've been bombarded with advertisements from skincare companies and makeup companies this holiday season trying to sell you all of these products that you don't need. So in this video, you guys, we're gonna do a biochemical analysis of all the major vitamin C serums in the market today. But just to let you guys know why I'm doing a biochemical analysis, well, I have a PhD in biochemistry, so I have studied this shit and you know i'm not a dermatologist but dermatologists recommend these products but chemists like us are the ones formulating these products for you in the lab so we know what is the active ingredient what works and what doesn't work so we are the ones actually formulating a lot of the skincare that you're using also you guys spend so much time on youtube listening to specialists like um, so it's time that you actually listen to somebody who has in their blood all of this information flowing. So let's get started. You might also ask why vitamin C serum specifically, like why are we talking about this product? If you're a skincare junkie, you would know that vitamin C serums are one of the most beloved skincare products. And therein lies the problem because a lot of companies try to jump on this train and try to formulate a lot of these vitamin C serums, most of which actually do not work so that is why i'm making this video because you if you're watching this you need to know more about what you're putting on your face you need to know about where your money is going and if it's actually effective by the end of this video i shit you not you're gonna have a phd in vitamin c serums i promise you that so what we're gonna do in this video is first talk about the active ingredients of a vitamin c serum so we're gonna talk about the effectiveness first but the second thing we're gonna do in this video is actually look at four major vitamin c serums in the market and see what their cost is and if they're actually even effective and we're gonna use the information from our first point the effectiveness into our second point and the third point is like i'm going to recommend what is good for you for long-term use so keep watching this video i'm going to try to make all of this information available to you super easy so let's talk about the first point which is the effectiveness so there are a lot of vitamin c formulations that are available in the market and the most common one of them is number one the l-ascorbic acid so l-ascorbic acid is the active ingredient in vitamin c it is water soluble but because it is water soluble it is also highly unstable it's a potent antioxidant but it's also highly unstable it can oxidize in air it can oxidize with light it can oxidize with heat and that's why a lot of these vitamin c formulations that have l-ascorbic acid they're sold in these amber colored dark bottles and they recommend that you keep them at the fridge if you want to watch a video of how unstable it actually is there is a actually a really good video already by lab muffin where she tells you how fast the l-ascorbic acid degrades in formulation so therein lies the finickiness of l-ascorbic acid which is the most commonly used active ingredient in vitamin c serums that it's highly unstable so over time it degrades if you don't store the products properly it degrades also l-ascorbic acid because it's so unstable it has to be at a certain ph and that ph actually does not align well with our skin's ph so from a biochemist perspective if you see l-ascorbic acid in a vitamin c product i would personally not recommend it for a bunch of reasons so that is the first formulation that vitamin c serums have that is the most common formulation the second formulation that's most readily available in the market and a lot of products have is called sap or sodium ascorbyl phosphate so as you can understand by the name sodium ascorbyl phosphate it has a salt group attached to it so what happens is that putting a salt group on the l-ascorbic acid makes it more stable also because of the salt group this ascorbic acid formulation it can penetrate your skin's lipid bilayer very easily and it actually is absorbed by the skin better than just l-ascorbic acid also because the sodium group is attached to it now this formulation can be prepared at a variety of different ph it's, it's way more stable than l-ascorbic acid and also you can change the ph to better match the skin's ph sap i would say if this is l-ascorbic 
ascorbic acid, this is where SAP is or the sodium ascorbyl phosphate is. It's definitely a better formulation to look for. So if you ever encounter a vitamin C serum, look for L-ascorbic acid or look for sodium ascorbyl phosphate and always go to the sodium ascorbyl phosphate one i would say not the l-ascorbic acid the third vitamin c serum formulation which we're going to talk about in this video is called the thd ascorbate or the tetrahexyl decal ascorbate so what thd ascorbate means is that the tetrahexyl decal is basically a name of a lipid group so these biochemists have now attached a lipid group onto the l-ascorbic acid or to the ascorbate so what happens is that vitamin c or the active ingredient l-ascorbic acid or even sodium ascorbyl phosphates by attaching a lipid group to the ascorbate this thd ascorbate is actually fat soluble what i mean by that is that now this thd ascorbate becomes really good for like cream based applications or oil based applications so companies can now use this in cream formulations and oils so like vitamin c brightening oil or vitamin c cream instead of vitamin c serum so thd ascorbate is definitely more stable than your regular l ascorbic acid and it's effectively absorbed by the skin in the lipid bilayer because it also has a fat group attached to it so whenever you see a vitamin c formulation please look for what the active ingredient is i would personally as a biochemist rank the active ingredients as l-ascorbic acid then i would definitely rank the sodium ascorbyl phosphate here and i would rank the thd somewhere around the same as sodium ascorbyl phosphate the reason being that both sap the sodium ascorbyl phosphate and the thd are more stable than your regular l-ascorbic acid the only good thing about l-ascorbic acid is that it's more potent but potency doesn't mean anything if it's highly unstable and won't even stay in formulation for long the next thing we're going to talk about is cost of four major vitamin c products available in this market currently and then i'm going to tell you which one i use based on a variety of different reasons so let's jump into some of the products that are widely available in the market right now and people use okay so the first product that we're looking at is the skin cuticles formulation of their vitamin c serum so the one thing that always stands out for me is the cost so this is priced at 166 dollars personally as a freshly minted graduate student i cannot afford this i'm never going to be able to buy a 166 dollar vitamin c serum so this is a big x for me in terms of cost after the cost which is a big no for me the second thing that's a no for me is that it's formulated with l ascorbic acid which we already talked about is highly unstable the good thing about formulations like this is that it actually lists that it has 15 percent l ascorbic acid which i really admire when companies are really upfront about it usually vitamin c formulations are in the range of 10 to 20 percent when companies offer this information to me i am really happy because i know that what the concentration of vitamin c serum is they're upfront about it and i believe them more as a consumer which is another thing so that's a plus but the cost is a negative and the l-ascorbic acid formulation is a negative also what happens is because the l-ascorbic acid is really unstable a lot of these companies have to add vitamin e uh, which you can see here to stabilize these formulations and ferulic acid so vitamin e actually enhances the effects of vitamin c but this ferulic acid and vitamin e formulations also stabilize the vitamin c so what happens is when you have to add all of these additional products to stabilize your formulation the cost goes up and that is why this skin cuticles vitamin c serum is highly expensive so for me this one is unknown definitely so the next one we're going to talk about is the drunk elephant c forma vitamin c day serum so again if you look at their formulation they mention it upright that it's potent antioxidant complex with 15 percent l-ascorbic acid and ferulic acid and one percent vitamin e so the formulation is basically the same as the skin cuticle ones but the price is a mere 88 dollars so you're getting basically the same product but at half the price also this one the drunk elephant one is also 30 mils and this one is also 30 mils so you're not getting any more of the skin cuticles so the formulation is basically the same the active ingredients are basically the same but you're getting it at half the price so if i was a consumer i would 
go towards the drunk elephant one rather than skin cuticle ones if i really want a fresh l ascorbic acid like really potent acute antioxidant thing but again like i said i am not really into the l ascorbic acid ones because they're not that stable they're not stable no matter how much you can try to convince me i'm not gonna buy these Kylie has a vitamin C serum too, and no surprise, everyone does. And like I said in that Tinder profile, brighten plus firm, whatever the f that means. Um, and if you look at the ingredients, the one thing that stands out to me that nowhere has it mentioned that what the formulation percentage is. So it's 20 mils. First of all, it's less than the first two. Um, it's 10 mils less than the first two, but also it doesn't say what percentage of the active ingredient it's using. The good thing is, a, high, a plus is that it's using the THD ascorbate. So it's using a more stable formulation. Like who knew Kylie would know this? Or Kylie's company would know this? Sure, Kylie doesn't know the difference between any of this. But they are using the THD ascorbate, which is the highly stable, fat-soluble sort of formulation and no shit you can see that her serum actually is a cream based formulation it's not a water based formulation so the reason they are using the THD ascorbate is because it's more of a creamy serum than a water based serum so this information we already know our information is true and it's working so a good thing is that they're using the THD ascorbate in a cream formulation but the bad thing is nowhere in the ingredients does it ever say what the percentage of the formulation is like I said that vitamin C for it to be effective should at least be between 10 to 20 percent in the formulation if you can you can read down the Kylie skin ingredient list up and down and it will never tell you what the percentage of the formulation is it is a highly that's a big negative for me because literally by writing THD ascorbate that doesn't mean anything it could be 1% THD it could be 0.5% THD it could be 2% THD at what that concentration it's never going to be effective so would I buy this one hell to the no the next one we come to is the one that i would personally purchase and which is the vitamin c serum for mad hippie and the reason being if i look at their ingredient highlights it says that it uses our sap or sodium ascorbyl phosphate a more stable form of vitamin c than the commonly used l ascorbic acid found in most skincare products it provides the same benefits without the risk of oxidation and irritation that is often associated with l ascorbic acid it. so exactly why I would prefer an SAP product is because it will be formulated at a good pH and it won't oxidize rapidly and it also has the same vitamin E and ferulic acid to further stabilize the formulation and upon searching I can find that the mad hippie company they say that we use approximately a 10% concentration of sodium ascorbyl phosphate which is equivalent to about a 20% concentration of L ascorbic acid in its effectiveness because it's twice as effective they are using a 10% formulation which is towards the lower end but it's twice as effective so it's like a 20% L ascorbic acid formulation so again you guys of the four vitamin C serums as a smart consumer I would definitely range towards the last one or the mad hippie one and not at all at the first three ones because I don't want L ascorbic acid and I don't want a formulation that doesn't tell me what percentage it's actually at because I want to be true to the content I make and I want to empower people who watch my content to be smart consumers too I actually did buy the mad hippie vitamin C serum as you can see so I did buy and I can't probably show you because my camera won't focus but it did say SAP here which is the sodium ascorbyl phosphate and when I open it it is definitely in an amber colored bottle which it's basically to protect the vitamin C formulation from light but I don't know if it matters but they also send like these samples of vitamin A serums and other serums really um, so in the first point we discussed the effectiveness of these different formulations in the second point we discussed the cost and now you know the kind of vitamin C serum I would buy is the one which is SAP or sodium ascorbyl phosphate which specifies what concentration the SAP or the ascorbate formulation is at the cost of the vitamin C formulation from mad hippie is just $33 and it's also 30 mils of the formulation the third thing I want to talk about is the long-term uses so 
the only reason I would use an L-ascorbic acid formulation is if I have dark spots on my skin that are very apparent because L-ascorbic acid is very potent so it's good for like removing these dark spots or pigmentation like spot treatment because it's so effective but I would still really want to use a SAP formulation because it's more stable it will be absorbed by my skin which i know for sure i can't say that much for the l ascorbic acid and for the long term use too because the sap formulations are formulated as a skin friendly ph definitely better for long term use as compared to the l ascorbic formulations obviously there are exceptions to rules and i think one company that's been making these exceptions is the ordinary so to get around the fact that a lot of the l ascorbic formulations are not stable the ordinary and a, com a lot of companies now they also sell powders so literally they're selling you 100% L-ascorbic acid powder that you can make into your own formulation and use as you would like so what I would want to say is that if you are dealing with dark spots or pigmentations I would not really buy a water-based formulation of L-ascorbic acid I would rather buy a powder-based formulation from a company like The Ordinary it is 20 grams and it is at 5.8 US dollars, so almost 6 US dollars. You can make your own vitamin C solution at the required concentration and use it as a spot treatment on your pigmentation or on your dark spots. And then for the long term use, I would definitely use the Mad Hippie Serum, which is a SAP based formulation. So, okay, guys, this was the video that I really wanted to make today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to unload a lot of information onto you, but this this is all information that is easily processed and I hope it will help you so thank you guys I hope you enjoyed this video I just want to help you guys become a better consumer I love you guys I hope you have a good new year and please subscribe if you like this video and I'll be back with more content bye